Hello and welcome. This is the 2020 President's Cup at Willamette Park. I am Scott Withers and I am joined by Chris Nelson. We get the rare treat of having both of us on the card today. Yeah, this is going to be fun to watch a little Willamette Park. Uh, I don't play here all that often, but it's pretty straightforward. Got to get your birdies. As you see the leaderboard, you shot a nice nine down to start. Myself and Travis at eight and we got a seven under from Cervantes to round out our card. Yeah, and I live about half an hour from this course, and I would guess that you have the same amount of rounds that I do at it in the last five <laughs> years. Like, I just never drive over to Willamette Park. I probably have less than 10 or maybe 15 rounds there. But you, Travis, and I play together all the time. Manny is a newcomer to the group. Manny's been around for a long, long time, was playing disc golf when I started back in the uh, you know 2009 or 10 range playing tournaments. But hole one leading it off it's in the par four setting today a little longer 548 and that's that's not the roller you're looking for to start no you uh you hit one of the big trees there off to the right got kicked into the rough gonna see if you'll be able to get up and down travis head another veteran around the pacific northwest it looks like he's also putting down a roller yeah, undoubtedly Roadrunner from him. That's what I threw also. You're probably not joining our Roadrunner club, but you're going air shot here. Yeah, just throwing my flippy PD, trying to cruise it down the center and clip that one tree. You got to miss. And then Manny is pretty forehand dominant, I would say. Um, coming in at 952 rated, he just doesn't have a lot of tournaments lately. He moved over to the Dalles, and there's not a lot of disc golf over there. So you can I see... You yeah, you can see where my drive ended up. Not where you want to be, but I was able to take that chariot out, and that's been a really cool addition to my bag. I think it's the same mold as the MD3, so yeah. it's a straight mid, but it got me out of trouble there. I'm throwing a buzz, just trying to get it under the ceiling, probably like 275 out. Hit my line. Yeah, man, he queuing up another forehand as we talked about. This whole... Even though it's only 548, I feel like you really can't throw the drive much more than about 300, so you're always left with full shots in. The ceiling's so low, and it just doesn't... The, it's never in this long setting, and the fairway just doesn't really set up to get a drive anywhere close to an eagle look. So, you know, you throw it in the fairway, throw your up shot, and then I've left myself with probably about 35 feet here to steal that birdie on hole one and get the round started. Yeah, Travis hit his upshot there. Here you are, trying to keep pace. Nice putt. Yeah, good feelings for the first one of the day from that distance to for see him go sure. in after the bad drive, especially knowing that all three of you guys were close. I will put some discs so, or <laughs> leaves over your disc to make sure you know that I disapprove of you throwing it that closely. Oh, man, good stuff. So here's Manny with the little comebacker. He kind of got an unfortunate skip long to like 25 and just wasn't able to connect. He'll, he'll tap in. This is, you know, even at 548, it is a par four. I know you get a lot of that like three and a half talk, but this is definitely a par four. You're not getting two putts at it. And I think a good portion of the field probably does take four. You and Travis made it look real easy by getting your drives into a place that you had a clean up shot in. We're able to throw the backhand hyzer and kind of get through the one main gap. But three birdies in a par, what you'd expect off lead card on that hole. Yeah, definitely, definitely a hole you just want to want to start your day off, right? You know, it's only a par four that we're playing, so want to take advantage. Hole two, 373, um, kind of either the, f the force over flick with a stable driver or a turnover. You're going probably your PD2. Yeah, I might have thrown Cloudbreaker on this. It's 370. I, you know, neither of us necessarily have that 400 foot sidearm. So at 370, without being able to flex it, I think I threw Cloudbreaker. Travis doesn't have a forehand game if he's <laughs> because he's in trouble, but he's going to go backhand turnovers on almost everything out here on this pretty forehand-friendly course at Willamette. Yeah, here I am throwing uh, Emperor, trying to try to get a little stable. I'm probably like 40 feet left, just a little too much flex on that one. So when we're talking about forehand distance, 370 on a line like this, I'm throwing it as hard as I can. Are you comfortable getting it 370? I feel like our forehands are about the same. That's about my range, yeah, 370. Uh, it's where I'm taking out a 12 speed. I I prefer to flick, you know, the Firebirds, but 
at this range, you know, yeah, I'm really forcing over a stable driver with Manny and Travis laying up. Here I am, yeah, ended up about pin high, 35-40. And just a little left side. Yeah, not great baskets, I would say, <laughs> out here at Willamette. I hit left side as well. That one slimes in. That was a little more of a nervous putt, and I'm not sure why after making the good putt on the first hole, but you'll see mm -hmm. these things are some old, I believe, Mach 2s with some added chains, and they they don't hold everything, so it's it's one of the challenges. Willamette Park's an older disc golf course. It's been around for a long time, and the baskets definitely have not been upgraded, so you do have to take a little off of your putt, but, you know, that's that's a little mini bonus hole being what it is, and now we go into what's probably the hardest hole in the course, hole 3, 457, low cover you're taking a distance driver and just smashing it i guess you could take a fairway if you're just trying to throw it straight we're still trying to birdie this hole but i would be surprised if there was any birdies this day um before our lead group got up here yeah the play is really to just uh punch something maybe a little a little straight to understable on hyzer to navigate that ceiling uh, but it, it's at 450. It's just such a pin, tough pin to reach. As you saw, you nicked one little branch at the top, and you're probably 25 short left in the tree with no butt. Yep. Travis hits the gap. You're stepping up. Same thing. I assume a destroyer, or a DD3 here. Good shot. Get the turnover. Get out in the field, and that takes all the stress out of making a par. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For the biggest of arms that Heiser play is there it's uh, to hit it, it's probably like 525 at least uh it's grown in quite a bit since the years past yeah Man, i was looking at up. that i was looking at the heiser play in practice and i was not i i can't get it there like i can get it around the corner and i can get it out somewhere to have just an upshot but it's not a realistic opportunity so you're mm -hmm. looking at what 60 here something like that yeah just trying to give it a little Nose up, go. Liked it out of my hand. Ends up finishing a little longer than I'd like. Probably about 20, 20 coming back. Here you are. <laughs> we said short left. <laughs> what are you thinking here? I don't think there's any thoughts going through here other than how do I not bogey from 25 feet away from the hole? Like, how do I make <laughs> sure I get out of this tree? Thankfully, I was able to dig in a little bit more, flip the thing upside down, and slide it up to the basket. But, you know, not the best feeling to throw it 430 feet in a 457 foot hole pretty much in line with the basket and then just have to flip your putter upside down and putt out but you've got a little cleanup go ahead and cash that in so no harms with pars on the really tough third hole you know it's, it's just kind of what that hole is yeah par frame for the card i'm not sure if anybody got this hole in competition it's just it's so demanding off the tee and one, two, and three are the hardest three-hole stretch at any point of Willamette. This is not the most difficult course in the world. You do want to get birdies. We get into the section of the course where you have a lot of holes between like 260 and 350, and they're mostly all gettable. There's some tough lines, but we move on to four, and this is your classic 313-foot wide open mid-range or fairway hyzer, whatever you want it to be. This is in early September. The grass is dead, the ground's skippy, but if you throw a good shot, there's not much that can get away from you here. Yeah, you're, you're stepping up to this one thinking this is a must-get, uh, nothing in your way, really pretty standard backhand righty shot. I assume most of you guys, are, or most MPO players are throwing mid. I'm throwing my buzz here uh, and just grip lock it a second too late. Not enough stability, so I'm going to make the hole a little harder than it needs to be with a 30-foot putt. Right, but even then, it's it's only 30 feet, right? You're talking right. talking a misfire, something you're not happy with out of your hand, and you're still inside the circle. Manny steps up. It looks a little high, and it is, thankfully, wide enough right. Good line. Gets all the way over to the basket, and we're going to have some birdie putts, and you're going to be first from 30. This would be a good feeling to get, but never really got the nose up. Not a good effort. Not happy with that. Travis, go ahead and cash that birdie in. Do you remember what time we started this day? It was such a weird feeling because I don't even feel like we played until 3 or 
It was a really big field, and they were doing like 15 minute tee times. I really like it was afternoon by the time, like, true afternoon by the time we teed off. And I know it was a little, a little bit of a weird feeling, maybe a little hard to get going those first few holes after sitting around all day waiting to play around. I feel like it was honestly even later than than 3:30. You know, playing well into the late afternoon. But yeah, that's what happens. You know, the new COVID restrictions. We gotta. Make sure we're playing safe. Make sure we're spread out. Yeah, we didn't get backed up on the course. I know that. <laughs> he teed off last. And anytime you have the video card, you're a little bit slower anyway. I will say that Colin hustles just as much as that girl that oh, was yeah. just running in the video behind you to get from spot to spot. And our uh, our good friend Travis does not make it easy on him. <laughs> Travis is the fastest player that I've ever seen. But we are going to take a quick break and kick it off to a sponsor. This video is brought to you by Resistance Discs. Head over to resistancediscs.com and use code CHSPORTS at checkout to get free shipping on any order over $25. Thank you to resistancediscs.com, and let's get back to the video. Jump back in on hole five here, and you, you were referencing the COVID restrictions and stuff as I get up and throw another Roadrunner roller, kind of a trick shot on this hole. I'm going to... Wrap just short of the basketball, we'll have a putt. We've ended up having a lot of two round tournaments this year as opposed to three. So instead of starting around on Sunday morning, we've had a lot of the late afternoon, late afternoon tea times. And you know, it, it's a different thing. And I don't, I don't know if I love teeing off super late every day, but it's part of what we had to do this year. Yeah, at the end of the day, I think we're all just grateful to be playing tournaments again after having that unfortunate break in the middle of the year, but hole five, you, you pretty much displayed the line with that road runner. I'm trying to emulate it here with my roller and I just give it a little air bounce, which carries too far. Right. I hit the spider tree there. <clears throat> yeah. This, this hole in the right setting is quite a bit easier than in the left because you can flip a roller the whole way. And I actually didn't even remember that they moved the basket on this hole, but they did. <laughs> it was behind the big tree first round. I think this one's a little easier to get a true putt at. The roller is the pure shot that gets there. You want to cash in on it, but it's it's a little mini bonus hole as well. Yeah, this one this one's a nice a nice two to pick up out here at Willamette. Not everyone's going to be getting this one, as you see. You were the only one really with a, a easy putt. Manny from probably just outside circle one wasn't able to connect. We'll all tap in our pars. How are you feeling through five holes here? You've had a couple putts not go in. Are you? Do you feel like you've missed opportunities, or are you still ready to go get some birdies? Yeah, definitely. That hole four miss was tough. Uh, messed up the star frame for the lead group. But we got another basically must get coming up here. Hole six, only 240. It's in the right setting. Uh, a basic flip or just a slight turnover. You're throwing your Withers Gator here. Yeah, Gator, this has to be the easiest hole in the course. And there's not a shot in the world that will make this Gator not go right at the end. It doesn't matter how I throw it. 240 feet is about as far as it goes. This hole is absolutely made for that disc. Yep, and Travis, without the forehand throwing, uh, it's probably like a, f a beat-in putter. I don't hate the backhand play here. The ceiling on the forehand side gets a little tight. And mm -hmm. it's really not that far right. It, it is kind of a straight shot. You can make it a flex shot with the forehand, but I assume you're throwing zone here. Yeah, this is my, my mortar. Same thing, just a little okay. bit more stable. I don't quite commit, and I've clipped that ceiling that you're talking about. So once again, I'm left uh, about 30 feet on a, a musket birdie. Doesn't feel good. Yeah, Manny, off the top, it looked like on his putt, you're stepping up. Again, probably needing it at this point. Yep. It's just, I'm not sure. I don't remember quite what happened there. It looked like I was maybe a tad bit right. But again, these baskets, they got to they gotta be perfect. Yep, and you guys, all three kind of handed me a little little bonus there by missing. Yeah, you <laughs> kind of showing us what the lead group should be doing on a hole like this. That's a, that was not a fun, fun hole for our group. <clears throat> I struggle at times with those holes that are short and easy. You know, you play holes and you grind them out, and the last hole is like a technical shot that you had to make something happen on, and then you get <laughs> to hole six as you investigate why it didn't go in, and then it seems so easy and so straightforward. But 
I miss these holes quite a bit and you go back after the round and you're kicking yourself because you didn't pick up the easiest one on the course or whatever so you know we should be more than one under as a group on that but now we get into some holes that you you know these are birdie holes but they're not gimme holes anymore so maybe we'll see if we can execute these a little better yeah as you've opened up a, a sizable lead already on our card i think you have four on me and five on the other two but hole seven is uh pretty conventional flick for most of us if you have it those little pylons on the left play as an ob line to get in your head a little bit travis just taking the straight shot this looks great just needs to get down yeah the distance control with the backhand is tough the forehand does hang out over out of bounds for a good portion of it and there's a couple trees that you can see on the left side they're not tall but they're directly in the way to get the forehand right next to the basket. Mine went over him. I assume you're trying to go a little high also, a little higher than Manny's anyway. Yeah, Manny made the mistake there, sawed it off a bit. He's going to be left with not not much here, about 50 short. Yeah, it's just a standard upshot to the basket and take his par. And then we have Travis from probably 35 or 40 left, jump putt range. <laughs> oh, oh, no. This... See a lot of those out of Willamette. Yeah, Something we'll about these again. baskets. Slow motion. The only slowing down it does is on the back rim as it teases him and falls out. Brutal. It just is what it is. You see that? Just give it a nice little soft hyzer right on the pole. Another Rudy. Yep, and you're tapping in here. No. Oh. Yep, tapping in. Still wondering about my, my miss on the last hole, and then after seeing Travis, I believe that's his red XD, so maybe this basket's just not that XD-friendly as I put with him as well. We need to get, like, a dagger or something. <laughs> just the deepest putter that we can we can find with the most surface area, making contact with these baskets out here. Um, but, yeah, 15 under, 10 under, 10 under, and 8 under. So far, you guys need some birdies at this point to kind of keep up before i'm able to run away with it but they're out here so you know everyone's trying to pile them on uh hole eight 307 feet as the same last hole was just a standard forehand this hole's a pretty standard skipping backhand the basket is up on a mound uh, i'm throwing firebird there and it was able to get on the mound Yep, there's that little red mando tree there. You just got to go left of that. It's not really in the way. It's just to protect uh, the players on seven. I'm throwing that Halo TL3, one of my new favorite discs in the bag. Probably about circle's edge long. Travis getting his workout in, sprinting up to the tee box, throwing <laughs> it what appears to be maybe 25 short, right on the hill. Great shot. Manny... I believe this is maybe like a fire burn. He's got the backhand form. That's good to see. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with his bag, um, but he's. you look like you're about 30 and he's inside of that. So, Yeah, definitely need this. Haven't had a lot of putts go my way, so it feels good to connect there. Yeah, especially elevated putt. You're in have to birdie them all mode now because you know there's a lot more coming manny goes ahead and throws his birdie putt little air ball to the right and on the mound like this you get about the same distance coming back yeah that's the danger these little raised baskets they can they can bite you real fast travis taking three seconds and pulls it right as well yeah it should have taken four seconds on that one <laughs> gotta get Travis in the camera mode and slow him down a little bit, but makes a comebacker. He wants birdie there settles with the par man. He's actually going to settle with a bogey on this hole. And this is where my drive ended up and tap in the birdie. Another routine two for you making it look easy. And yeah, that bogey bogeys out here. Just sting at a course like this. When you know that scores are going to be low, the rounds that you do really score well on do feel easy, right? You may hit yep. one or two big putts during a round, but at a course like Willamette, throwing your drives close is really what matters. And we're going to come up here on hole nine on a very hard par three. 
with realistically no line to get all the way down to this basket. Yeah, this one's pretty tough. The trees have uh, grown in here, which you are throwing right over the top of. You kind of just want to stall the shot with a slight flex back. Pretty much what you did just there. I think you're you're going to be in the circle with that shot. Yeah, that was a TL3 that's pretty understable. Um, are you going fairway here also? Yeah, this is my 11-time T period, and I just grip lock it. So I'll just be bailing out right. I think I clip something on the way. I'll just have to lay up. Travis going with a flippy fairway driver, I'm sure. Um, I know he throws his CE Eagle a lot. This is probably another road runner, would be my guess. Yeah. So and the flight the flight's fine. It's easier to do that and get way out right on this hole and have like a fifty footer than it is to park the hole. But it's not always a bad bad idea. You're gonna have an open shot. And I don't know, this hole it's really hard to birdie, but at the same time it's not hard to par. Like even where Manny went over there, it's still just a pitch up and mm -hmm. be able to take your three. So I don't know. I, I don't know if I love this setting. It's really pretty where you're putting at, but it's 10 years ago, it was probably a much better hole than it is today. Yeah, not not a whole lot of separation on this hole. Uh, Travis tr oh, trying to lay up clips the ceiling, so he's going to have to save the par. Yeah, he's still out. Mm -hmm. Just off the cage, so he'll have to settle for the four. He, you are 25. Yep. Not a good release, you know. No spin, not enough power, whatever the case was. My miss is off the front cage pretty commonly. You just don't spin it or don't you know, release from quite high enough. And It doesn't sting as much because I was 7 under in the front 9 coming into this hole. I'll stay there, but you know, when you're looking back on it after a round, those are the little mistakes that you don't want to have when you're trying to win events. <laughs> uh, just reminding us that you are human in the end. So we'll play that hole as... One over as a group, and it's going to wrap up our front nine. I, I guarantee there's going to be more fireworks on the back nine than there was in the front. little flat, but, you know, everyone even par or better on the harder of the two nines on the course. So we're in full. We'll go get it mode on the back nine. See you guys there. Hey guys, Colin here with CH Sports. I just wanted to give a huge shout out to my coverage sponsors. These videos would not be able to come to life without these people's help, so I really appreciate it. There's plans starting as low as $3 a month, and every single dollar helps grow the channel. If you would like to see your name or business listed in the credits of every single one of my videos, please head over to patreon.com slash chsports.